Darling, darling, darling. Okay, okay, I think it's time we had a real conversation. Cause I slay. I think it's time we had a real conversation. Be slay! What up? What's up, brother? You, mama. I'm so excited that you are here. You have no idea. I don't? You have no idea how much I am excited to be here with you because I'm proud of you, number one. Thank you. Let's start with that because you have come such a mighty long way. Mighty. But you don't look anything. Trust me, Saints. You don't look anything like what she's been through. What? Hey! Huh? Make a run. Shut up! <laughs> I don't look like what I've been through, huh? <laughs> I just have to give God a Skeletor praise. <laughs> By the power of grace, God! I have the power! <laughs> don't play. Don't play. You don't know what I, you don't know you, what you wake you, up in see, my spirit. Listen. Careful. Right. Cause he wakes up stuff that's in my spirit. Yep, I stir up the gift. The Looney Tunes, meet me. Meet me. Y'all don't know nothing about that. But mm. listen. <laughs> Be <Beats> like. <laughs> yes. Yes. And it's time that we have some real conversation. I think it's time we had a real conversation. What do you feel like about the condition of the church when it comes to, I mean, we, let, let me just put it out there. We yes. were looking at an article that was, that was put out that um, with a picture of Bishop Eddie Long mm -hmm. and Kim Burrell. Yes. And it says. BT.com? Right. It says that millennials need to abandon the church. Yeah. That's the, that's the headline. That's the headline. Now, I have to, I can't, I, I was offended because mm. I was like, abandon the church. Right, right, yeah. This is life for, for people, but it is not life for a lot of people because of the condition. Of the state of where it's at. Of the state of where it's mm -hmm. at. Let's talk about that. How do, how do you feel, how do we get here to a place where, where people are being encouraged to abandon the church? You know, it's been actually on the decline since around 2009, 2010, because something happened with the music. And I'm, gonna, and I'm not going to say that it's specifically the music, but I am going to say that once we got rid of the choirs, right. that's when the church started losing its power. Because yeah. they went to like praise ensembles and only having people who could sing be in front of the folks. That's one of the reasons why, because some oh. people come to church never even listen to the word. But if right. that choir is banging and annoying, right. they'll come specifically for that. So I think that was part of the decline. I want to stay right there for yeah. one second because a lot of people are like, but it's progressive to have a praise and worship team. But this is. You have to have all of it. You yeah, can't not just cancel the new out. Stuff. Yeah. You can't cancel out traditional mm -hmm. gospel. You, and I mean, if you ask me, if I had anything to do with it, you couldn't cancel out quartet. No, you got to have that too. You need, you need everything. And why does why do we feel like we can pigeonhole a sound for God? He's not a First of all, God is not a genre. Right. There is no specific gospel sound. You have traditional sounds that remind you of a certain time and a certain type of style but there's god is so diverse i mean look at like the rainbow i mean this really? guy is so hilarious i'm speaking of god now yes he took a horse and said come here rc <laughs> now you're a giraffe that's hilarious <laughs> wait a minute the I horse had no that. clue when he walked over that his neck come was here about horsey. To get stretched. Like, come here rc <laughs> Don't you Giraffe. just love his brain? I love your brain. <laughs> I love your brain. <laughs> but honestly, the choir is the army. And I feel like once the army is no longer in place, now you let in all kinds of division and, and spiritual wickedness in high places. And pastors have to work really hard to start from ground zero because the, the choirs actually make it where the pastor or the preacher doesn't even have to work hard because they right. broke it up so much and brought the glory in so hard right. that all he got to do is just pick up the baton and run with it. And people felt like we need to get away from to go to. And it's, now, that's actually a, another topic within itself because what's happening as a result, there are a lot of people that are abandoning the faith mm -hmm. because they don't find their place. It's like, you, you, they're going away from mm. something, mm -hmm. but you gotta go to, to something. something. Where are they going? Well, here's the thing. Once I got off the hamster wheel of church and got in his wheel, Come my on. life got better. 
And I think it's oh not God. that people don't don't like the church, but there's been so many problems is about the latter shall be greater. Where is it? Right. There's been so many carrots that have been dangled in front of us, right. such as healing, such as deliverance, such as breakthrough. Exactly. But keep coming back next week. Oh, you almost got a bite, but come back next week. You know, it's just, it's, <laughs> oh, they won't give you the full remedy. You almost, <laughs> like the, 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 the fish, the fishing yeah, rod. It's yes. like that. Oh, and I think quicker people, than that. people uh, have so much information available to them now right. that they don't wait for the pastor to give them a word or learn about God. They go and research them and be like, the pastor ain't even saying the right. He's word. not even He's not even saying the right. He, right. You know, and then you got the prophets getting, you know, Google prophecies and then saying it and saying it in front of the, the people church. saying. But see, here's the thing. What is it that keeps the church blinded to that reality that you need to be checked about this? Yeah, I think what it's uh, it? it's the form of godliness. As long as people have the look, the sound and the perception uh, of what they're used to. They'll, they'd rather stay in familiar bondage than venture into foreign freedom. Say that one more time. Some people prefer familiar bondage over foreign freedom. Sometimes your freedom is in a place you've never been to before. So some wow. people prefer Egypt. Wow. Even if it is bondage and repetitive and it's on a, a merry-go-round. It's, it's the carousel. But at mm. least I'm familiar with this carousel. At wow. least I'm familiar with this repetition. Even wow. though I'm not growing. I'm not but getting I'm deeper familiar. in the word, but I'm familiar with the hocus pocus of it, and I'm comfortable wow. with that. And I think. Do you think it's fear? Do you, Do you think fear plays? Because sometimes people can just be, I don't want to, I don't I don't want to upset God. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to break go go too far. Right. What is too far? What is, what that? is that? What, what is that? Um. I just now, within the last three years, started liking God. I only uh -huh. loved him so I wouldn't go to hell or miss the rapture. That Come was on. the basis of my relationship with him. It was like, let me let me fear him in a way. It's like, yeah, you know your parents will get you, but I didn't walk around in fear of my father and mom. Right. I was in fear of if I did something wrong, what the repercussions would be for my action. Right. But I wasn't fearful of my parents. They love me. Right. God loves us. Right. So the way it was marketed to me was that, like, yeah, he's God, but he's making a list. He's checking it twice. twice. You know, he's it's, gonna it, find it was, out he's, he's, nice, he's right. on a mission with elaborate plans to send us Just all to hell. You Just like, waiting for you like, to mess do up. It, do it. And that's not who right. we serve. That's not who we serve. You know, I'm not saying that, you know, you willfully sin. God forbid. But it's just like, why are we marketing God as someone who's a monster versus a father, a friend, a parent? Mm. And so it took me losing my parents to find out who God really was in my life outside mm. of the testimony I had only vicariously through their life. I knew who God was by what they told me, and I believed them, and I'm mm -hmm. sure it's true. Mm -hmm. But until I lost them, that's when I found out what my real relationship with God was based off of. And during that time, the church was nowhere to be found. So that's why I didn't abandon the church. I just, it wasn't healthy for me. It wasn't healthy. It wasn't healthy for and my mind and my spirit. And it was a season that you had to come, you had to come to grips with, okay, for me, mm -hmm. I've got to get off the hamster wheel. Yes. And, and out of the Truman Show. Right. Because it was... It was like a, a version of the world. Like when you're raised in church all your life, you're not aware that there's an actual practical functioning world. Like when I first stopped going to church to become a civilian and just get my life and spirit back together, mm -hmm. I didn't even know that Sundays was another day that people didn't do nothing. Right. Because Sundays was and an it's all necessary. day no, siege. Right. But I mean, another job. You know, people trip, they, they trip out because, you know, at my church, like around mm -hmm. Christmas, mm -hmm. my pastor's like, "All right, we're not gonna be here, so don't <laughs> <laughs> y'all need to be home with your family. We're not having church today. As a matter of fact, we're gonna see y'all next year. Right? Go Come back, go with your family. Because we don't encourage that. We don't encourage we don't that. En we don't encourage family to. Well, pastors don't pass. even have the time to just be with marriage. their families. You know, you see a lot of you know marriages, first families." presenting a, 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 a facade but in, 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 the, in the interim of the true relationship is just mm -hmm. awful you have pastors that don't study the word for their own personal devotion they only study for the word they're going to gonna give to teach right. so their own personal lives and I'm speaking from experience I used yeah. to be a pastor a long time right. ago but 
there was times where I was only studying the word to prepare to give to them, but I really wasn't involved with personal devotion. Mm -hmm. And there's a major distinction it's there. Big. So I was empty a lot of times. I was ministering out of a deficit. Wow. Now I'm out of an overflow. Whatever people get from me is out of the abundance. It's an wow. overflow. You know? Well, I want to, I want to. And I think that's the abandonment you see is that yes. people are not fulfilled. They're not fulfilled. Part right. of it is. There's no joy in church. It's right. so calculated. I'm not saying you got to have anarchy in church, but I'm saying you do have to let the spirit have its way. I want to be able to wake up and know I'm going to church. I don't know what God's going to do, but I know he's going to do something so, amazing. Mm -hmm. And I'm excited because I don't know which way this river is going to run. I don't exactly. know which way this wind is going to blow, but I know he's going to meet me there. Me now me. it's just, I know by this time, okay, there's offering. First praise team song. I still got another 20 right. minutes. Or, and let me just wash this mug from home in my bed. Right. From Bed You Baptist. You can do that. With overseer sheets as the pastor. <laughs> yes. But see, the thing of it is, is, and there's so many different styles of worship. Yes. There are some people that can, they can roll with that. Okay, one hour. I have to say this for mm -hmm, myself. Mm -hmm. One hour. We come in, we worship, we baptize, and we are out of yeah. here in an hour. Yeah. Why can why is that good for me? Well, it's good for me because daily I am in worship. Yeah. I get my, I get You're it. You're already there. It's not I'm there that you find there. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you but everybody can't handle that because they need to sit for a while and worship. Mm. You have to find what works for you, for you but a lot yeah. of people don't understand that they have permission to find out what works for them. Yeah. Yeah. They don't give themselves the permission yeah. to figure out, okay, this isn't working for my soul. Yeah, Hello? he'll give you pastors after your own. No. He'll, he'll give you the pastor according yeah. to the type of heart you have. Yeah. He'll lead you to that type. But I feel mm -hmm. like there's pastors who are doing it as a vocation mm -hmm. and not a calling. Mm -hmm. You can go to school, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean you have a pastor's heart. That's exactly right. You see what I'm saying? Like, pastor's heart there are is, people is, that have decided to be pastors yeah like this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna be a pastor and i'm like why would you do that unless you just don't want a life right because it's a, a full it's life of commitment that's right it's not just the preaching mm -hmm. it's having to watch families cry and funerals mm -hmm. and having to visit hospitals mm -hmm. and dealing with issues that the previous church didn't have to deal with right and if you don't tell the folks the truth nowadays they're gonna find out for themselves what you're not telling them mm -hmm. If you're not hitting that word right, they're going to Google and find out if what you're saying is actually true. Exactly. So now we have to be line upon line and precept upon precept okay. because this generation is not fearful the, of God. Well, not only they're that. They're not scared of They're not scared of to tell you they're that they don't believe what you're, believe what you're about. saying. They're not afraid it's of It's a you. different time. Because they have access to more information than we've had access to. And a lot of people have just depended upon the information that's given from their pastor. And what you don't understand is... The church was never designed to be in rows. It was supposed to be in circles of relationships. But yeah, that's like a that slave ship. Have, right, but see what I'm saying is that, but now that it's in rows, you have you are submitted to a one person's perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is why you have so many different perspectives mm. that that are, are infiltrating through the church. And it's like, well, I mean, that's not what that means in the scripture. That's not what that means. Oh, but yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. But, but that's that pastor's perspective. Right. There's no private interpretation of that. There's that's, no private. And, and I don't like it when people take the scriptures, and depending on how they feel that day about what's going on in their personal life, right. that gets an interjectory into, it's almost like, here's the word, but here's my spin based off of the emotions I feel that day. Right. And right. That's, that's where you have to like be able to pull back from your flesh. Right. And say, God, as a leader, as a pastor, as a speaker, what is it that you will want to give to the people through me, not from me? Right. When it's from me, it's only for me. Mm. When it's through me, it hits the people and, and comes back and convicts back to me. You. Because right. it's a double-edged sword. Amen.